हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दी वर्ल्ड ऑफ फाइनेंस नाउ सी एम ए फाइनेंस स्टूडेंट्स आर बेसिकली डिमांडिंग वन थिंग फ्रॉम माई साइड सो फर्स्ट लेट मी मैंशन दैट दिस वीडियो इज मेंट फॉर सी एम ए फाइनल फॉर द सब्जेक्ट स्ट्रैटेजिक फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट एस एफ एम नाउ वॉट स्टूडेंट्स आर डिमांडिंग दैट सर can you do something as analysis for what has been asked in the recent exams at final level in the paper strategic financial management and actually uh, when i started looking into the pattern of uh, the exam questions i was happy to observe that cma institute in india they have started following a steady pattern and in fact it's a very good content so let us first identify one thing that your paper sfm will be a 100 marks paper and 100 marks paper will be split into two segments 30 marks will be mcqs and 70 marks will be subjective so the 30 marks mcq is broken up into 15 mcqs of 2 marks each and the 70 marks subjective content that is basically split into 14 marks into 6 questions and out of these six questions students will be required to answer any five because your objective is to cover up that 70 marks so cma final sfm exams this is the scenario in the current time now this is basically pertaining to the syllabus that is issued for 2022 onward that is basically referred to as 2022 syllabus now if i take you to the chapter wise or topic wise marks that were demanded in the exam we come across this kind of analysis and what took my attention that this particular pattern of mcqs if you observe the objective questions it was i've gathered the data for past 5 attempts but earlier two attempts the mcq weightage was 20 and now in the previous three terms it has risen to 30 when i say previous three terms i'm talking about december 2023 June 2024 and December 2024 exams. So the upcoming exam will be June 2025 exam. Now prior to that, if we look into the last three terms, that is basically the most relevant data. So fine. What I do is, I don't focus on the earlier two attempts. That is the initial two terms. I'll rather focus on the later three terms because that is setting the exact pattern. and that brings me to a more structured discussion like this so i'm including only three terms december 2023 june and december 2024 these three terms first thing your first question is targeting the multiple choice questions and this 30 marks will be literally asked from anywhere in your curriculum and it could be a theory question it could be a calculative question they may ask literally anything so this is going to test out your overall understanding about the subject and you have to be of course not taking this part lightly you should be preparing this very very thoroughly the cma institute they have issued a small document on the pattern of 
MCQs that will be asked in the upcoming exam. You all must have referred that. And when I observed that, I was a little disheartened that a couple of questions over there, the answers given in the MCQ answer part were incorrect answers and I did not like it. But whatever it is, you have to prepare it. In examination, they will not commit this kind of blunder. So, what happens when they issue any material, that time there are chances of error. But in examination, most cases the exam questions and the solutions are structured with complete prominence and they do not let errors come into picture. Anyway, let us get to the analysis of this. Objective questions, the first question comprising of 15 parts of 2 marks each overall 30 marks. So, your 30 marks out of 100 marks is covering only from this area. Now, let us look into how do you find the breakup of the 14 marks questions which are 5 more questions to be answered. One of the 6 questions, so once again let me tell you there will be 6 questions of 14 marks each and you have to attempt only 5 of these. So, when you have to attempt 5 out of 6, one question you can leave out. Now, uh, if I am a student writing exam, I will prefer leaving out the theory question. So, one 14 mark dedicated theory question is being asked and I will tell you from where that theory is being picked up. Look at this, look at this. This topic uh, securitization, the fourth chapter. Securitization, can you see 4 marks over here? It is a theory question. Likewise, if I go to the 14th topic, the 14th topic that is the international financial environment, it is asking a 5 mark question which will again be a theory question particularly. So, this is another area from where theory question is being asked and yet another 5 marks will be from 17th topic that is digital finance, another 5 mark question. So, can you notice this 5, this 5 and this 4 summed up, it is basically 14 marks. These 14 marks theory questions will be grouped as A, B, C within one question. So, it is generally the last question in your paper or second last question in your paper where this theory question will be asked. So, 14 marks multiplied by 6 questions will be raised including this one theory question which you can leave by choice. I do not emphasize that you leave it. I would rather say that keep it as an open choice and uh, if you feel like attempting that one by choice you can definitely do that. So, other 5 questions of 14 marks each. How are these questions structured? Look at one thing. This area 7 plus 7 from investment decisions. If I exclude the leasing decisions aside, 7 plus 7, 14 marks coming from investment decisions including the evaluation of risky proposals and that is basically all about capital budgeting and risk analysis in capital budgeting. Then we have other 7 marks from leasing decisions. So, in total from long term investments and leasing taken together, the breakup goes this way 14 marks for long term investment decisions that is capital budgeting and 7 marks towards leasing decisions. Now, we have another 14 marks from this particular area that is uh, and let me mark this one not with a black color so that you can understand this will be a calculative kind of question that is a numerical question. So, 14 marks coming from equity and bond valuation and evaluation of performance that means when you are dealing with equity and bond valuation 14 marks on an average is coming from that area. Now, look at the mutual fund, mutual fund another 7 marks. So, by far what did we observe? 14 marks from investment decisions, 14 marks from bond and share valuation and next combination of 14 marks will be 
a kind of uh, combination from leasing decision and mutual funds. I am not saying that this will be the exact combination, but I am telling you the marks weightage wise how the other 5 questions of 14 marks each will be structured. Then look at one thing portfolio theory and practice that is topic number 8, 9 and 10 these 3 taken together correct 8, 9 and 10 these 3 taken together is summing up to another 14 marks that is 7 plus another 7 and this 7 plus 7 combination basically you can see always it is a 7 mark question and sometimes from the 9th topic sometimes from the 10th topic but 8th topic is always coming regularly. So, this part if you look generally in the past 3 exams no questions have been asked that is from the efficient market hypothesis and risks in financial market. But uh, the theory questions which I have marked from topic number 4, 14 and 17 sometimes they may switch to something from this area as well. So, do not just leave out anything in your exam preparation what has not been asked in the previous 3 terms may anyway come up in the coming exam terms. So, please do not go for selective study the idea of putting forward this analysis was not for you to make selective study but instead you should be aware of what is happening in exam. Now another 14 marks coverage is from derivative and the remainder 14 marks is generally being asked from this segment that is your forex part. So, 14 marks from forex, 14 marks from derivative, 14 marks from portfolio, 14 marks from capital budgeting and remainder 14 marks from a combination of mutual fund and leasing decision. If you can identify these as the major topics in your curriculum and prepare this thoroughly then actually speaking topics like digital finance or international financial environment securitization or the theory topics in which no questions were asked in recent exams you can actually skip the theory topics I am not asking you to skip in your preparation I am asking you to skip it in exam because calculative questions or numerical questions will always give you an edge of scoring out of out means a 14 mark question you can score 14 out of 14 but in theory questions generally it may not happen best answers also would maybe give you some 10 or 12 marks out of 14 but some exceptional cases do happen where students have written really very good answers giving them 14 out of 14 because there were instances in the past exams where students have scored 100 out of 100 in SFM paper as a result you need to just make sure that this analysis what I have shown over here is very clearly fit into your minds and for your reference I will just uh, put forward this uh, for a while on screen so that you can either take note of this or you can take a screenshot and analyze the same on your own for your reference. Thank you very much for attending this class.